Good afternoon. My name is Todd Sanders. I'm the president and CEO of the Greater Phoenix Chamber. We appreciate you joining us for today's webinar. The Chamber is dedicated to ensuring our business community receives up-to-date, relevant information during this time, and it would not be possible without our incredible partners. So I'd like to begin by thanking today's sponsors who continue to demonstrate their strong commitment to our Chamber, our community, and our state. So a virtual round of applause for APS, SRP, and Penamore Craig for all their support. Thank you. We are thrilled to be here today to hear from Sandra Watson, President and CEO of the Arizona Commerce Authority. I'm sure many of you joined us in April when we featured Sandra to share how state leaders are responding and working to ensure economic security for Arizona during this pandemic. Now, there have been many developments and strategies unveiled since we last spoke with Sandra, and I know we're all eager to hear from her today. So after Sandra's update, we'll take some questions. So uh, if you'd like to submit your questions now, or if you think of something while she's speaking, go ahead and use the Q&A box on the side of the screen, and I'll attempt to get through as many questions as possible, time permitting. So we're usually pretty good about that. So it's now my pleasure to turn it over to our guest of honor, President and CEO of the Arizona Commerce Authority, my good friend, Sandra Watson. Sandra, thank you for joining us today, and take it away. Thank you so much, Todd. It's wonderful to be here with you uh, today. It was about a month ago that I participated in a webinar um, to talk to you about what was, uh, what was happening at that point in time. So a lot has happened since then. I'm going to try something new. I've got a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to see if I can get that on the screen now, and then I'll walk you through some slides, and then I'm happy to answer any questions at that time. Okay, so can everybody see the screen? Yes. Got it? Okay, yes. excellent. Thank you. Um, so uh, as you all know, under the, I'm gonna just advance this, but as you know, that the governor, uh, under the governor's leadership, Arizona has begun taking gradual steps to reopen and re-energize our economy. The governor's approach has continued to be thoughtful, measured, and steady to provide public health and safety. The data from the Department of Health Services show that our state continues to head in the right direction and our hospitals have the capacity to provide the care for those who need it. In addition, testing has now ramped up significantly throughout the state thanks to efforts by the ADHS in partnership with organizations like Sonora Quest, Mayo Clinic, Banner Health, TGen, Walgreens, U of A, and ASU. If you're seeking uh, information on testing, it's available through the azdhs.gov website. As a result of this progress, starting on May 4th, Arizona retailers, restaurants, salons, barber shops, pools, and fitness facilities have begun to reopen in phases while adhering strictly to physical dis dis distancing and other safety guidelines from the CDC. And on May 15th, last Friday, Arizona's stay at home, stay healthy, stay connected order expired. New guidance outlined in the new executive order took effect on Saturday, May 16th. This guideline aligns with gating criteria issued by the White House and the CDC just to help Arizona stay healthy, return smarter, and return stronger. Public health and safety remain number one priority for Arizona as we continue to re-energize the economy. Much of the current guidance remains the same for business, regardless of industry. This includes maintaining a strict physical distance of six feet or more, frequently disinfecting all high touch point surfaces, encouraging good personal hygiene, include, including regular hand washing for at least 20 seconds with soap and hot water, not allowing employees to come into the office or into work if they are feeling sick or displaying symptoms, and urging customers to stay at home if they are feeling sick, displaying symptoms, or among the population at high risk of illness. The special guidance for businesses in various industries 
like retail, restaurants, fitness centers, pool salons, barber shops, and spas, was informed by the latest information from ADHS and the CDC, as well as detailed input provided by Arizona's business leaders. Governor Ducey has hosted four virtual town hall events with nearly a thousand participants joining each call to gather feedback and answer questions from the business community. Extensive input, ideas, and guidelines produced both by industry associations and individual businesses was also shared with us via email. Special thanks to you, Todd, and the Phoenix Chamber and the many organizations that provided feedback. We truly appreciate all the time that you spent to weigh and, and, and the effort that you've made to weigh in. Utilizing all of this input, Arizona's industry guidance is thoughtfully designed to protect public safety while allowing businesses to become operational as soon as possible. You will find all the latest guidance and fact sheets on COVID-19 on the COVID-19 section of the azcommerce.com website under re-energizing Arizona's economy. As I shared with you when we last met, we launched the COVID-19 Arizona Business Resource section of our website in mid-March, and it has been evolving on a daily basis. It has received more than 64,000 visits to date, which accounts for more than half of the total traffic to our website during the same period. Shortly after launching the site, we, became, we began a statewide campaign to reach small business owners and ensure they were aware of available resources by driving people to our website. It was delivered through TV, social media, and email, and it performed extremely well. I'm not able to share the video with you today uh, because we weren't able to figure out how to play the sound, but we will be able to get that video out to you if you'd like to see it. And we also ran some digital media ads, and this is one of many uh, that you may have seen in various outlets. Some of you may also uh, recognize the video as it was aired exclusive, extensively on TV channels statewide via a partnership with public or with Cox Media. In fact, thanks to the generous donate in kind donation support provided by Cox, the video aired 8,300 times in a two week period for a total of more than 10.8 million impressions. Additionally, our social media content has generated more than 378,000 impressions and 25,000 direct engagements to date. In an effort to continually create new and innovative ways to support our small businesses, on April, 7th, on April 27th, we launched the Small Business Bootcamp and Resource Collective. This effort brings together a broad coalition of Arizona's subject matter experts and provides a platform to share knowledge and information with business leaders. It provides a regular touch point for participants to connect with mentors, learning strategies for navigating an uncertain environment and begin to recover economically while reopening their business safely. This is a virtual daily session beginning every morning at 9 a.m. Over the past four and a half weeks, we've delivered 17 sessions attended by more than 1,100 Arizona small business representatives. You can find recordings of past sessions and information on upcoming sessions on our website. Under, uh, there's a section on our website um, under webinars that you can find that information. And uh, we also provided another great video uh, from our team for our digital channels. And I don't believe, uh, I'm gonna play it, but I don't, this doesn't require sound. So I think this one should be fine.
All right. Um, and just yesterday, we launched the Return Stronger Upskilling Initiative in partnership with Arizona at Work to connect Arizonans statewide with, un, with employment training resources and virtual career counseling. The effort is anchored by a website where dislocated workers who are no longer employed due to the pandemic will find a central, easy to navigate place to learn about and leverage the many no cost training opportunities available to them. It brings together a comprehensive suite of training tools to help workers gain knowledge and learn new skills as they seek reemployment. You can access the Return Stronger Upskilling website at azcommerce.com forward slash return stronger, all one word. We'll be driving traffic to this website through a new statewide marketing campaign delivered through print, TV, social media, and earned media channels. On the site, workers will find unique uh, new resources such as a partnership Arizona has joined with global online learning platform Coursera, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Arizona is one of three states nationwide that were the first to join the partnership. It offers unemployment workers completely free access to every one of their 3,800 courses on the platform. This also includes professional certifications such as the Google IT Support Professional Certificate designed specifically to train people for high demand jobs. Participants have until September 30th to enroll and complete courses by the end of the year. It's important to note that participants may still receive unemployment benefits during the training period of any of the Arizona at Work programs. And on that note, in some other positive news for the affected workers, the Arizona Department of Economic Security issued $519 million in unemployment insurance and pandemic unemployment assistance payments last week. And an additional $95.5 million was issued on Monday. And of course, I had another video for you, but because I can't figure out the sound, um, I'm not going to play the video, but I hope that you'll be seeing that. Um, on many of the stations. We're also partnering with Cox again on this new video. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Arizona Corona, uh, Coronavirus Relief Fund. In terms of the broader community support, the state is providing, um, give you a quick update on the, the fund that was established by Governor Ducey. I'm honored to serve on the fund committee and I'm very grateful that we've received over $8.2 million in commitments. I sincerely appreciate the hundreds of Arizona citizens and businesses that have stepped up and made generous donations to support those in need. Over the past week, the governor has begun to announce the first wave of $6 million in grant funding, which includes $5 million, uh, to purchase 1.1 million uh, N95 masks for Arizona, uh, $500,000 to the Arizona Association for Food Banks, which supports all 15 Arizona counties, $300,000 to support Arizona seniors, $100,000 to support special needs children, $100,000 to support foster kids. If you're interested in learning more about the fund, please visit ArizonaTogether.org. And on that happy note, I'd like to shift and talk a little bit about some relevant data and trends that we're seeing. First, I'd like to share with you the most recent data we've received on the SBA pay Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, two of the most widely utilized programs under the CARES Act. As of the last update we received from the feds, 72,523 small businesses in Arizona have been approved for eight, just over $8.5 billion in PPP loans. This places our state within the top 20 for both the number of businesses and the amount of funds approved. 
there's there's also uh, still money remaining in this program. There's about $115 billion left, according to the most recent reports. And if you're considering applying, the ACA has a PPP loan calculator and other uh, related resources on the program on our COVID-19 section in our website under business support. For the second round and the most recent top line numbers for the whole program demonstrate a much higher participation from small banks. In total nationwide, 2.7 million loans have been approved by close to 5,500 participating lenders representing $195 billion with an average loan size of 70,622. You'll see here on the screen that small banks were leading the way um, at the last count with 46% of the volume. Medium banks were at 14% of the volume and large banks were at about 40%. The other heavily utilized SBA program is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. As of the last update, we know that 4,625 Arizona companies have had an uh, idle loan and approved, uh, approved loans representing nearly $462 million. Additionally, more than 21,966 com Arizona companies have received the emergency advance funds, representing $91.6 million. Between the PPP and the IDLE programs, the most recent reporting shows approximately 94,489 loans have been processed for Arizona small businesses representing just under $9.05 billion. There is some delay in reporting, so it's safe to say that these numbers don't nearly account for all of the loans uh, that Arizona businesses have been approved for. So we'll continue to provide those updates. And we do recognize that for many businesses, these programs have had some challenges. And our colleagues at the federal level are dealing with an overwhelming, overwhelmingly amount of demand that has created a significant backlog. However, these numbers indicate that the money is flowing uh, into, into Arizona and is providing the much needed relief for our businesses. In terms of our economic outlook, although there's still a level of uncertainty, not just for our state, but for the entire global economy. I am strongly encouraged by the number of Arizona, uh, by a number of Arizona economic indicators. First, prior to the crisis, our state was experiencing incredible economic momentum. We were consistently leading the nation in population growth and among the top states for job growth, personal income growth, GDP growth, manufacturing attractiveness, fiscal stability, talent quality, and more. We have earned a global reputation as a hub for emerging next-gen technology, thanks to the governor's strong commitment to advancing pro-innovation policies that have allowed our businesses to thrive. Which led to days like the one we had last Thursday when two of the world's leading companies in their respective industries made announcements that they have chosen Arizona for their next phase of growth. In the morning, Zoom Communication, the platform that is connecting us all right now, announced it would create a total of 500 jobs at two new R&D centers, one of which will be in Phoenix. In the evening, Governor Ducey announced that TSMC, the global semiconductor industry leader, chose Arizona for its new $12 billion U.S. manufacturing facility, which is projected to create 1,600 new direct jobs and thousands of additional indirect jobs. This is truly, this, this is a truly incredible win for Arizona and one that significantly advances our global competitive position as manufacturers and their suppliers considering reshoring their operations. 
While our laser focus on supporting Arizona small businesses through the recovery will not change, pursuing these manufacturing and supply chain opportunities will, will also be a key area of focus for the ACA in the coming months. I'm pleased to say that over the last uh, or the past three months, as the pandemic gradually slowed the global economy, the ACA did not experience a loss of deals in our pipeline. Currently, there are 22, uh, 222 projects in our total pipeline, both attraction and expansion projects, representing tens of thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in capital investment. While some projects have paused temporarily, the exciting news from last week emphasizes that Arizona is still top of mind for growing industry leaders. As other states, particularly our neighboring states of California, continue to impose restrictions on business operations, Arizona's pragmatic approach will no doubt continue to attract attention. Lastly, I can share, I can't I can't share any specifics with you as the numbers aren't being released until tomorrow. However, the April 2020 unemployment numbers show that while, you know, of course, unemployment has spiked severely, Arizona has fared significantly better than the nation as a whole, particularly in certain industries. And we have seen that from last year or last month's reporting. So, in terms of the overall unemployment, we continue to see um, several percentage points uh, below the national average. Two reasons, our, economic, uh, our economy looks different than it did in 2008 and 2010. Our economy is diversified, and I believe that that is providing us with a strong relief um, and added benefit. Governor Ducey, and the other reason I believe that uh, we're not seeing, I, again, we are seeing significant job losses, but compared to the, the rest of the country, uh, we seem to be faring a little bit better. And I also believe that Governor Ducey's expanded definition of essential businesses, and as, as a result, we did not see those significant job losses in areas such as manufacturing and construction. The other factor uh, that, it, that unemployment claims have dropped off significantly. So we're seeing some trends and moving in the right direction. There is really no question that the COVID-19 pandemic has had an unprecedented effect on our economy, placing an immense strain on our businesses, workers, and their families. It will take time to return to life as we, knew, as we knew it before. However, as we do look to the future, I'm extremely confident that Arizona is well positioned for a strong economic recovery. Those are the updates I have for you today. And at this time, I'm happy to take any questions. And so I will go ahead and share my screen. Well, Sandra, thank you. And we'll give you a sec, there you are. Thank yeah. you for uh, the, the update and for, I know you're extremely busy for sharing some time with us today. First of all, congratulations on the two deals from last week. I know that really was a shot in the arm for all of us um, and, and, and not losing any deals, uh, significant for us. Um, one question, we have gotten a lot of calls from um, advanced manufacturers and we, we of course forward those, those to you. Um, are you getting an uptick in companies that are looking to nearshore back to the United States? We are. We're seeing uh, an increase in manu international manufacturers. Um, and just in the last week, we've uh, received uh, information on three very competitive projects. So we'll be competing with a number of other states on those. Uh, but just in the last week, we've seen an additional three. One of the great news for, for Arizona, and thank you. Um, so just pulling back a little bit, you know, we, we talked last last time, things were still pretty fresh. You're, you're obviously in constant contact with business leaders and community leaders. You know, what are, what, what's the general thought now? How are they feeling? And what are some of their challenges now that we're sort of opening things back up? Right. So um, that's a very good question. Businesses um, are still... Um, dealing with uh, the fundamental change that has happened over the last two months. 
Um, they've had to conduct business differently. They've had to uh, develop new ways of interacting with customers and, and uh, a number of different areas trying to ensure that they're continuing to connect not only with their employees, but their customers. So we've seen some challenges as companies are trying to reopen. Some of the challenges have been around trying to rehire some of their employees. I'm sure you've heard that as well. Um, so obviously we're, we're working with employers to see how we might be able to assist them in that, in that area. We're also seeing some or hearing some challenges from businesses who are uh, trying to understand the forgivable portion of the PPP program. And uh, there is some, um, there's some concern about the 75% for payroll and the 25% uh, for other fixed expenses. And so we're working with the federal government, obviously working with you, your organizations and others, we're all hearing the same thing. Those are some of the challenges that the small business community is facing and we're, we're trying to do our best to make sure they're getting the answers that they need. Well, th thank you for that. It is correct. We're hearing a lot of questions about that. People don't know necessarily know what, what to expect. So we're, we're, we'll appreciate that. We'll look forward to getting that information from you. Uh, moving on, you mentioned PPP and the fact that we, we uh, second round seem to do a lot better. And, and clearly, Jenner, you're talking to business leaders across the spectrum. The smaller businesses that really had a hard time accessing those dollars, did you get a sense that they were able to do more this time to, to get inside the pipeline? Absolutely. So if you remember the very first round, we had about 19,300 businesses who qualified. And that was the, the very first round that had $349 billion. The second round had $310 billion. Um, we've seen a significant number of companies actually uh, were eligible. So about 55,000 companies were eligible for loans or, or had loans processed and approved in the second round. So a significant, uh, a significant number of new businesses getting and smaller businesses getting the loans. And then we had a number of small banks and medium-sized banks that were able to participate. And um, so I, just I, the process, I think people learned it. The very first round, it was much more challenging, much more difficult to participate in. Uh, those funds lasted two weeks and they were gone. Uh, this round, uh, we still have $115 billion. The banks are participating all size, all, at all sizes. And uh, there's, there's, I think our micro businesses um, and our smaller, uh, smaller businesses did see um, act, a better access to those programs this time mm. around. Tremendous news, given the, the the huge need, and I think the disappointment from that first round um, to see them access those dollars is is really tremendous. Let me ask you, Senator, and I know that probably it might be a little early, but are you starting to see any economic data um, for Arizona? Clearly, we know what unemployment looks like, but any other sort of data points that you're getting or you're thinking about or looking at um, as we kind of wade through the summer? Yeah, so uh, we've got an entire research team who continues to monitor um, economic indicators for the state of Arizona. We do that in, you know, in relation to the other states so that we know where our competitive posture is compared to those other states. Um, our our uh, position um, was somewhat different than some of the other states. As you remember, we had a billion dollar billion dollars in our rainy day fund. And we had a billion dollar surf, uh, surplus um, going into the, the budget discussion. So that will help us as we move forward. Um, unfortunately, there are lots of states right now that did not have a rainy day fund, did not have a budget surplus. So we're looking at data across this, the um, country as it relates to the fiscal health of states as well as um, other economic indicators. We're also seeing, and this is somewhat anecdotal right now, but we're seeing a lot more interest and we're hearing from a lot of our real estate brokers on the residential side that they're seeing an uptick 
in the number of out-of-state people looking for homes in, in the state. So we are seeing continued population growth. Um, obviously that stalled while um, a lot of these states had the stay-at-home policies and orders in effect, but uh, we are starting to see some of that ramp back up. Great news and unexpected news on the residential front, and certainly you're right. Uh, strong fiscal management by the governor and the legislature is going to give us uh, at least some leeway here as we move into the next fiscal year. Um, let me move on to job training. So excited by what you just launched. Uh, huge, given the numbers of folks who are looking to be upskilled or, or reskilled. Um, how is that going to differ from prior iterations and how can companies apply? So uh, we've got a number of things going on from a job training standpoint. The campaign, the Return Stronger campaign that we just launched is, is for individuals. Those individuals can go onto that website, they can um, search through all of the programs to determine which programs that they'd like to take advantage of. Employers can share that information obviously with their employees and, and individuals uh, from a training perspective. So employers can use the information, there's no cost, and it really is a catalog of all of the training opportunities for either folks that have been dislocated, um, it, you, know, you and I, if there was something we wanted to get uh, at, you know, special training on, we could go onto that website. So it really is available for everybody, and there's, uh, there's an enormous amount of opportunity, training opportunities on that website. So I encourage everyone to go and take a look at the website. But we also have two other things that we've done. One, we've also launched a special round of our job training program dedicated specifically for companies who have had uh, you know, experience severe challenges from a workforce standpoint. And so they'll be able to apply for those funds if they go to the AZ Commerce website, we've got information on our website, uh, contact um, our office and we'll make sure we direct them. And then we have our traditional job training program and we still have uh, that open as well. So we have a round going on our traditional job training, that's for employers who are adding new workers and are looking for training dollars. And we have our COVID special job training program that is also designed for employers. Um, and that is specifically directed uh, for companies who have been impacted. And then we have this uh, grow, uh, return stronger campaign that is really directed at individuals. Well, I'm not sure where you're, when, when you're finding time to sleep, <laughs> but thank you for, for that work. There was a question that was um, asked, if you could give the URL again for the, the returning to work um, website. Yeah, so everything is on our website. So at azcommerce.com and then forward slash returning stronger, all one word. But if you get to azcommerce.com, we have a COVID section on our website and all of the information is available. Wonderful. There was a follow-up question that was asked by someone in the audience relating to the training. And I think you mentioned Coursera. Um, it must have been um, from one of our community colleges that they asked whether or not there would be an opportunity for the community colleges to perhaps um, add some of training content as well, or if there'd be an opportunity for them to engage. Absolutely. We are uh, reaching out to all of our post-secondary institutes to see if they want to add their course and curriculums on on there as well okay well that's wonderful and i think i think that's a great way for arizona and to, to also arizona um, entities to apply um just want to switch a little bit um you know what, what are you hearing from our, our sort of neighboring states obviously everyone's kind of doing a little different looks like california is still kind of in a much different approach you know how are you see arizona different how is this going to um, impact us as we come out of this so, um, I mean, that's a good question. I have been working very closely with my colleagues across the country. We have a conversation every week and we share ideas um, and walk through different programs that we've all developed. Arizona, I believe, is in a very strong position moving forward. We've had an expanded and a broader uh, list of businesses in considered essential businesses and services for the state. So we've had businesses operating throughout this process and this challenging time. So 
some of these states are now just opening up manufacturing and construction and some of these other areas. Arizona has been doing it since the beginning. But I do think that Arizona is, is in a very, is in a stronger position and is able to bounce back quicker. Absolutely. Well, let me pivot a little bit since we're talking about reopening. Um, I, I see today that the CDC guidelines finally got released. Um, and I think there are uh, multiple sort of places where you can find guidelines. When thinking about small businesses, you know, what's the best place for small businesses to, if they want to open up in a safe way, uh, to find out what the guidelines they should be following today? Right. So there are lots of websites out there. You've mentioned CDC. We actually promote their guidelines as well. Uh, the White House has uh, their gating criteria that we've been using. Um, the governor's uh, website has guidelines for industries as uh, he continues to advance some of those businesses. Um, the Department of Health Services also has information. Um, so what we've done is we've connected all of those resources. So on our website, we do have a section where we have connected all of those uh, resources on particular guidance. And we've also developed a section on best practices. So for a small business who is interested is, is seeing what that guidance is, they can go to any of those websites um, or they can go to our website. There's generally no wrong door um, because we do, we do share information. But on our website, what we've done is we've identified best practices by industry and we've, and we've posted that information on our website as well. Wonderful. Thank you. And, and uh, a question relating to that, um, you know, more and more companies are going to be coming back. We know that um, uh, availability of PPEs for companies as they as they open up, you know, where are we? What are you hearing out there, Sandra? I mean, do we have a, an adequate supply as we come back? You know, I think it's a mixed uh, depending on what kind of PPE you're looking for. When we started this process, N95s became um, the focus of PPE discussions, um, along with gowns and a number of other things. But the N95s were really the area in which uh, we spent a, a, a number of, uh, or a majority of our time. At this point, what I'm hearing from employers is that uh, what they're looking for is disinfectant and cleaning supplies and material like that, not necessarily um, are they struggling to find the face masks and others? Plus, employees don't need N95s. You know, that's for um, our medical professionals. So as far as the face coverings, I'm, you know, at least from what I'm hearing, that that's pretty much I think we might have lost your sound a little bit, Sandra. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, so you know. I think disinfectant and some cleaning supplies seems to be where uh, people are focused, but as from what I'm hearing, employers are finding that. Good, well, thank you. Um, pivoting a little bit, uh, consumer confidence. Obviously, nationally, it's taken a hit. Arizona as well, we, we certainly saw that. Any, any kind of indication whether or not we're starting to rebound from a consumer confidence standpoint here in, in Arizona, and as you kind of talk to um, economists out there? I think we are slowly moving in that direction. As we talk to business owners, they are starting to see more and more people coming into their stores or into their restaurant. So it, it's starting to happen. It's gonna be a gradual comeback and that public confidence is, is incredibly important. As you know, um, having trust. Uh, so transparency becomes uh, critical and, and making sure that that public confidence is there. So as employers are opening up their stores, as they are making sure that their customers and their employees know what safety protocols that they have in place, that adds to that level of public confidence. Yeah, I think so, as people start to get out there and, and experience things. Let me, you know, obviously Phoenix Chamber, but you, you, you um, are responsible for the full state. So I think it'd be irresponsible if I didn't focus on another part of the state that's obviously suffering, the, the Navajo Nation. And, and I know you've been very focused um, with our friends up, up north. Can you talk to us a little bit about what's going on and how um, we're helping them out, and especially economically as well? 
Sure. Um, yes, of course. Uh, as you know, um, obviously, through the governor's leadership, the Department of Health Safety, uh, Health Services, as well as DEMA, they were providing a significant amount of support uh, in that particular region of the state. Um, so continue to provide and advance resources to ensure that they have the support that they need. Um, through DEMA, they have been completely providing supplies. Uh, I think we lost your sound again. Can you hear me? There we go, yep. Okay, well, I was just saying that uh, through the governor's leadership, Department of Health Services and DEMA, they've been providing a tremendous amount of support um, and, and providing supplies and support through the Navajo Nation. Okay, wonderful. Um, let me uh, switch gears. We, we with um, uh, the superintendent, public instruction have been working on the issue of the digital divide. Um, and, I, and I know that you, you obviously are involved in, in a lot of areas, but certainly the idea that um, we have a lot of kids that don't have technology to, to finish school. And stuff. What are you hearing about that? You know, what can companies do to be a, a part of that solution? Um, and, you know, is it, is it something we need to focus on for the longer term, given that we might still be um, through this, through the summer and maybe early into the fall? Yeah. That is a, um, an area that I believe the, the broader business community could provide um, a significant amount of uh, support, either through the donations of the hardware, the laptops that your, you know, your donation drive. Um, I think that's an incredible opportunity to provide a level of support and resources to our students who are impacted in addition to that, the hotspots. So between the two drives, whether it's the hardware or the hotspots, both of those are critical uh, to ensure that our students have the tools that they need in order to continue to, to learn in this environment. Obviously, uh, we're getting close to the end of the school year. Um, lots of folks graduating uh, and then moving on, obviously. So this is a this is a very challenging time for our students, and um, and the more that we are able to make this an easy transition for them, the better off they are. So I would encourage business leaders and community leaders to donate hardware, donate hotspots. Uh, they can talk to obviously uh, you and uh, and the chamber. The Arizona Commerce Authority, the Department of Education, we're all working very closely together. Well, in that vein, I, I think we need to hit on uh, something that we all are very proud of, and that's the relief fund um, and the amount of dollars that have flown into that. Clearly, this is an area where that could impact, but talk to us about some of the areas where you think um, there will be some assistance and the best way for people to apply. Excellent, thank you. Yes, we're very excited about the amount of donations that uh, have come into the fund over the last couple of months. So uh, truly appreciate um, the commitment from our business community and our, and our leaders throughout Arizona. We've seen many areas of need. Uh, the focus for the fund has been along a personal uh, protective equipment for the healthcare professionals, so PPE, the second area of focus has been remote uh, learning for our students, so making sure that we have the necessary tools for our students. The third area is really to support all of our nonprofits. And uh, we've been working very closely with a number of our nonprofits. You know, food security is a problem and an issue, certainly something that we uh, are committed to helping. We are also seeing, obviously, homelessness uh children in need the um elderly and uh, senior populations and how we can better support them so we're looking at organizations that are really providing that on the ground service and support to many of those that need it <clears throat> if <clears throat> excuse me if uh if if people want to donate and want to get involved they can go to arizonatogether.org <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and that is ArizonaToGether.org, and there's information on the relief fund. There's a donate button. You can also uh, volunteer time. 
So um, if you go onto that website, you're able to uh, either donate time, donate funds, um, and get involved. Well, thank you. It is such a, a great testament to uh, the good work that occurs here in, in Arizona. And uh, as we wrap up, I, I, I'd love to say all, all these great, nice things about you, but I think it's better if, we, if I hear from someone else. So I'm going to close with this quote. Um, a question that I got in the, in the form of a, a statement it says, congratulations to the ACA and especially you, Sandra, for your leadership to, uh, through two of the most dramatic economic downturns in history. Who could imagine the critical importance of the ACA when it started just 10 years ago? And that was, uh, that was from your friend, Alan McGuire. So I think we all share that. Thank and you. we want to thank you for your tireless work on behalf of, of our community, our state. It really matters, Sandra. And uh, we, will, we will work to support you in the next few months. And hopefully the next time we meet, things will be a little bit better and, and we'll keep moving forward. Thank you so much, Todd. It is just a pleasure to be working with you. And I appreciate your leadership and look forward to uh, continued success. So thank you for all Wonderful. you're doing. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you all. Have a good day.